Hey, welcome to the channel. It's uh, it's Wednesday. I'm up here at the uh, southeast corner of the moat. I thought I'd walk around here a little bit and just kind of hit some of the side streets uh, over behind me over in the Hyatt District. It's really interesting over there. There's a lot of neat stuff there to see. And uh, I'm going to tell you a funny story. It, it's uh, They're calling it the catch me if you can guy of, of Thailand. It's, it's really funny. Uh, <laughs> things never cease to amaze me. But anyway, I want to thank everybody that's come into the channel and, and joined the channel and subscribed, left comments, likes, and, and uh, sent me messages and stuff. It really makes me feel good to know that people are enjoying the comic, uh, the content. And uh, I know I had, I had some sound issues, and I, I'm pretty sure I've got them fixed. Uh, we'll find out when I get back home and, and start editing videos, but I, I'm pretty sure I've got that fixed because it's very annoying to hear the traffic going by. and. Uh, here in Chiang Mai, it's hard to find a place where you're not going to have motorcycles passing you, cars, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'll turn the camera around and you see where we're at. This is a really neat little thing. They have these things all around. These little houses, kind of like spirit houses or something. This one uh, has the chicken theme. Pretty cool. But we're going to go down here and we're going to go around the corner here and then walk south story i'm going to tell you uh, it's it's funny it's not from around here it's it's one of the provinces south of uh i believe south southeast of bangkok but uh this lawyer he uh he started his practice he he'd been a lawyer for about oh probably about four or five years and had taken quite a few cases some of the cases he he won and uh some of the cases, you know, he, he didn't do so well on. But uh, for all practical purposes, he was a aspiring attorney. And uh, had a Facebook page, pictures of him in his, you know, attorney outfit. They had the special kind of suit that they wear. And uh, he's, he's just having at it, you know. Well... This woman hires him, and she pays him something like 40,000 baht to represent her in a defamation suit that she's trying to file against somebody. And uh, she feels like it's dragging on too long. And so she calls him, and he, get, he, he tells her it's in process and gives her the case number, and the whole nine yards so she gets on the internet and starts looking and she finds out her case number that he gave her is actually a drug case it has nothing to do with defamation doesn't even have her name it's got somebody else's name on it and she's thinking oh my gosh what you know what's going on so She goes to a different attorney, you know, tells the attorney, you know, the problems that she's having and, and uh, hires him to represent her. Well, this attorney looks at it and, you know, looks at the guy's Facebook page and everything looks, you know, looks fine. You know, it just sometimes things like that happen. Well, then he gets to checking the guy's law license number. And he finds out it's actually issued to a woman way far away from where they were. So red flags start going up everywhere. So they contact the, the Royal Thai Police and they start looking into it. Well, it turns out this guy's not a lawyer. He's never been a lawyer. He's never been to law school. He's never done anything. They get to checking. He had been arrested once for assault, and he listed his occupation as a chicken seller, selling chicken on the side of the road. That's the only job they could ever find that he ever did. But what he was doing is he was taking money from these people. Some of the cases he'd handle, and, and some of them, they said some of them he won, some of them he lost. But uh, the cases that were a little bit too difficult for him, 
he'd farm out to a to another attorney for less money and make a little profit on it and uh, go about his business but uh, they say they have no idea how many cases this guy this guy's worked and how many how many people he's represented uh, the newspaper article is kind of funny it says people are probably a little bit chicken to come forward and tell them about it you know that, that they get ripped off by the guy but uh, it said he He'd been operating for about four years. Crazy stuff, man. You know, it just, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I've dealt with, I've never dealt with a phony attorney. I've, I've dealt with quite a few that I always felt, always questioned where they got their law license, you know, whether it was in Cracker Jack box or, you know, the Kellogg's box, but never one that was just an out and out total fraud. And uh, the news media went, went wild with it. They were calling him the, I guess, I think that guy's name is Frank, Frank Agnail or something, the guy that was the catch me if you can guy. And uh, they're calling him the, the Frank Abnail of, of Thailand. And it's really kind of funny. That was a lot of crap in the water. It's not moving very well either. We're gonna go walk straight here and down this soy right in front of us. And this is the Haya district. And it's really, it's really pretty back in here because a lot of the houses have been left alone. Uh, you know, there's a few that have been put up, but some of them are just like they were, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. And that's the parts of, of, of Chiang Mai that I like to walk when I can find places like that. There's another area up behind, uh, behind the zoo that I'm going to get into one of these days when I can. Now, if I can get across the street, we'll be doing good. Sometimes you just have to step out and hope they stop. There we go. Yeah, that worked out good. Sometimes they stop, sometimes they don't. Beautiful view right there. But uh, I just thought it was kind of kind of funny and. and uh, I would venture to say that the cases that he lost, they'll probably go back through and reevaluate them. And he'll have to find himself a real attorney, keep out of jail. Another thing that happened that was kind of funny, and like I said, these things have just happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, somewhere outside of Bangkok, and I don't know exactly where it was, it was. Uh, it wasn't Bangkok, it was outside of Bangkok, one of the other provinces. One of the police stations. Well, they got a new, uh, they got a new officer. He showed up at the door and he was in a full colonel's uniform with all the, the brass and the, the, you know, the, the ribbons and everything, you know, gun, radio, the whole nine yards, reporting for duty. And, uh, you know, they didn't really think that much about it. You know, they didn't, you know, any department or any organization that, that gets extra help, they're always really, uh, really glad to get the, get the help. Well, and it doesn't say how long, I don't think it was very long, but uh, they, they started checking because they hadn't had any notices from Bangkok that they were going to get a new officer. It was just kind of uh, off the cuff that the guy, guy showed up. Well, they get to check him. He's not an officer. He's gone to one of these little places. Oh, that place is really popular. Huh. A lot of people in there. Hmm, interesting. Are you just living right on the corner here? This is a really, really neat area. But, uh, yeah, he was just, uh, he wanted to be the, the police so bad, he just went out and bought himself a uniform. Got a nice restaurant here, too. I think. Yeah, it looks like she serves food in there. 
all kinds of neat little shops in this area. You just need to get over here and just walk around for yourself because you find stuff tucked in these little alleys that you wouldn't normally see if you're riding in the back of a tuk-tuk or you know, in a taxi or something like that, just get out exploring. But uh, he didn't get to be the police that day, but he sure did get to meet a bunch of them. But it, they had it all over the news. Me, they had pictures of all his gear set out there, uh, laid out on the table. And he, he spent a good bit of money, you know, he had to buy a gun. Now, how he bought a gun, I don't know. Um, but he had a gun, a radio, and all kinds of stuff. These guys here, they pay for everything themselves. They buy their uniforms, they buy their, their badges, their guns, their insignias. They pay for everything themselves. There's a neat little resort back here. The home massage. Hello. Hello. I've walked back in there before, I think. There's a mean dog back there. So I believe I'll pass. <laughs> Get out of this lady's way. Here's a neat place. Hello. Flare Espresso by Woody. Huh. Cool, coffee shop. Like I said, these places are tucked in everywhere. We, uh, we never had any problems with, we had one guy that it was a little bit, he was borderline trying to, trying to impersonate and uh, we dealt with him rather quickly but we had another guy it was, it was actually a kid and he had joined the Explorer group and he had gone in, out and bought himself a white crown Victoria oh, a laundry place hey you want your laundry done come bring it here Barber, these two ladies out enjoying themselves. Hello, Swati Cop. I think I'll turn left here. Hello, you have a rooming house here, guest house. Oh, around the corner. Okay, cute dog. <laughs> Super clean private room for three to five people. 480 to 850 baht. Toilet in suite, free Wi Fi. Hmm, must be down here somewhere. But uh, he, uh, he, had, he had bought himself a, a white crown Victoria, and, and we got him out one night and he had a blue light in the car, and uh, we ended up taking it from him and sending him on his merry way and give, reading him the riot act. And years later, in, in, in Tennessee, you can, put your, you can put yourself through the academy. The local college there has a police academy and if, you're, if you've never been arrested and you, you wanna pay for it yourself, they'll let you go through the academy. And when you come out, you're certifiable. You're not a certified officer, but you are, you've been trained and you have all the, the, uh, the requirements to be certified, but you have to be sponsored by a department in order to be certified. So this kid put him through, himself through the academy and uh, he ended up getting a job a few counties north of of where we were and uh, he uh, got involved in politics and then he ran for sheriff and by God he won and uh, 
he was in office about three years and they indicted him. Uh, they didn't come, they indicted him on like seven felony counts and he's the only sheriff that I, that I can remember when I, when I was in police, police work that uh, actually got arrested. Um, I'm sure there was others, but this one was real close. But uh, they didn't convict him. He, uh... morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, you? I'm very good. Yeah, where are you going now? <laughs> I just go walk and making a video for YouTube. Oh. I put you on YouTube, say hello. Okay, yeah. Okay, take care. What's your name? My name's Bill, what's your name? Uh, Madonna, nice to meet you. Too. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? America, but I live here. Yes, America. You go, uh, you live at uh, all, uh, like a... I live in Hangdong. Oh, Hangdong. <laughs> Take care. Take care, you? <laughs> she looks like she's a little bit two sheets under the wind. Well, I think we'll go left here. But, uh, yeah, they indicted him and they didn't convict him. And when it was, when his term was up, he got another person ran against him and, and beat him badly. And, uh, now he's a used car salesman. So, you know, you see all kinds of stuff. It's just, uh, it's amazing the, the lengths that people will go to. Uh, you know, when, when I was younger, I, you know, I, my, uh, I wanted to be a cop and I went to school and uh, I went to college but I was having, I had to work too. I had a, you know, I was married and had, a, had bills to pay and stuff and I couldn't do both things. And uh, I lasted about three or four semesters. And, and after that, I pretty much gave up that idea. And, uh, but in no way would I would have ever, ever considered putting on a police uniform and going out and acting like a cop. Chang Road Lane 2. Yeah, let's walk through here, see what's here. Just, uh, just no way I would have done it. And uh, what, the, what the thing was in, in South Florida at the time that I was interested in being a police officer, the competition was so stiff. These guys were getting out of, you know, had just returned from Vietnam and they had the GI Bill and they're all getting college educations. And uh, you know, they, they would take the higher educated, and I just didn't stand a chance. Um, but then when I got to Tennessee, it was a little bit different, and uh, it was a lot easier to get on. And I really didn't try to get on. It was a funny thing. It just kind of happened. And uh, one day I'll tell that story. Now, let's see where this is going to take me out. I don't know. Oh, I know where this is going to go. We'll go out this way. And then there's, I'll walk through that temple over there. But uh, it was a good career. I mean, there are other things that I could have done that I would have made a lot more money. Uh, I made a lot of good friends and um, made a few enemies too. <laughs> But that's par for the course. Now we'll get out here to the road here and we'll make a left. Wow, look at that Harley Davidson. Cool. It looks like this place is closed down. Maybe not, no. No, it's open. Oh, some neat artwork. Huh. But we're going to go left here. Let me see where we're at. Sushi, Italian, Ishiban. Sushi Ichiban Japanese restaurant. Huh. It's getting ready to. Things fired up. Got noodles right here. 
it's still early in the day, so there's not that many people out buying food right now here. At lunchtime, this place will be packed. Yeah, we'll walk in this temple a little bit. Yesterday was a Buddha holiday, and uh, from what my wife explained to me, all the monks had to go to the temple. And yesterday was the only day that they could have left monkhood. Um, that's the way she ex explained it to me. Uh, I don't really, don't really know that other, other than that. I know there were a lot of things going on around the city inside the temples. It's really pretty. Yeah, see, we walked right through that way. We'll go inside here. I have not been in this temple before. Oh, the doors are closed. Oh, well. Beautiful artwork here. It's so peaceful to walk through these temples, and especially early in the morning before a lot of people get here. It's just uh, really relaxing. I want to see what this is. Oh, really pretty. Well, I'm going to head back to the car. As you can see, I'm sweating a little bit, so I'll probably head home, take a shower, and relax a little bit, enjoy the afternoon. Hey, I appreciate everybody that's come into the channel, subscribed, and left comments, and uh, really makes me feel good to see the channel doing so well. And uh, I'll keep trying to find you decent content and crazy stories to tell you. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.